Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about luxury and why it's so expensive, whether it's in the mid-tier, the top end of the market. Relative to its peers, luxury is expensive. I'll also be talking you through why some brands, particularly those at the top end of the market, although their prices are already eye-wateringly high, they still continue to put up their prices every year. I'm Anisu Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anybody after the finer things in life. So whether you're somebody who's young and starting out and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you are somebody who wants to start exploring brands that are under the radar and still heavily weighted on quality, or you're somebody who's new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, then my content is very much geared towards you. There are three key variables that influence the price of a luxury product or a service. The raw materials, the production costs, and then what I call the psychology of pricing. I'm going to talk about the first two, your raw materials and production costs together. And then the third, the psychology of pricing, I'll talk about on its own. That essentially will bring everything together. There are seven levels of luxury, and as you go up the levels of luxury, so does the price and the quality. Quality being the raw material used, and also the craftsmanship. I'm going to touch above a video where I go into detail about the different levels of luxury. But as you go up, as I mentioned, so does the price and the quality. But what comes down is the quantity produced. It reduces as you go up the levels of luxury, whether it's a product or availability of a service. And in that, they create exclusivity. I will go into a lot more detail with regards to exclusivity because that's a major component um, when it comes to pricing a product in the psychology of pricing. But looking specifically in this bit at uh, your raw materials and also your production costs, if we look at handbags as an example, different levels of luxury, your everyday luxury, you have brands such as Kate Spade, Michael Kors, you have Coach. Affordable luxury, you have Burberry, Anya Hindmarsh, for example. Your premium core, you have Saint Laurent, you have Gucci, you have Givenchy. Your super premium, you have Chanel, you have Moina, you have Delvaux, for example. And then the ultra high end, you have Hermes. At each level, there's a difference in the quality of the materials used. So if we use calfskin, for example, if we look at calfskin, for example, the first two levels, your everyday affordable luxury, you will find brands such as Kate Spade, Michael Kors, Coach, for example, will source their hides from tanneries that service a number of brands they don't work exclusively with them they may have a contract in place which means every season they get a guaranteed number of leather hides but they will work with tanneries that work with a lot of brands as you come up the levels you notice from premium core to super premium you'll typically find a tannery will have an exclusive arrangement with possibly one or two um, brands and they then rear the animals and process the hides to a very high standard to ensure the brand has very good quality hides to uphold their standards. And then the top end, you have brands like Hermes, for example, where Hermes has an exclusive arrangement with all the tanneries or farms they would work with. For example, their crocodile, they saw some of their crocodile hides from Zimbabwe. Exclusive arrangement with the farmer who rears the crocodiles and then processes the hides um, to perfection. They're absolutely perfect. Associated charges, they're going to be expensive. Those hides are expensive to maintain the farm or the running costs. And then throw into that your shipping, shipping the hides from Zimbabwe to you are back to France. You also have your currency issues. So you have um, Hermes dealing in euros, buying US dollars for the Zimbabwean market, currency fluctuations at different points of the year. And then all the associated costs of an exclusive arrangement with a farm. And then when you look at Europe, for example, as you go up the levels, you will find from premium core all the way up, brands will typically produce their bags in their home country or within Europe. Labor is going to be incredibly expensive. And especially in comparison to your less developed economies in Asia and Africa, for example, 
labor is going to be very very expensive and as you go up the levels so we're talking now your super premium and your ultra high end you will find artisans um, are specialized they're very good at a particular skill and therefore potentially charge a premium for that and then throw into that the factories or the workshops, the uh, the overheads, electricity, the running water, maintaining machinery, um, servicing machinery. And then once you have the product, you have your advertising and you have your marketing costs. All of that is priced into the products, which then makes them incredibly expensive, especially as you go up the levels of, of, of luxury. They become eye-wateringly expensive because no expense is spared in sourcing the very best quality hides and also the best, best craftsmanship to produce the bags. But it's not enough for a brand to have your high uh, incidental costs, the raw materials and production. Throw into that equation um, they package the products using really slick marketing, advertising campaigns. Um, the image, the prestige they create around the brands is what people typically buy into. And that is what I refer to as the psychology of pricing. Luxury at its core is about creating an identity. It is an identity that consumers can relate to. People buy into a brand because they want to identify with what a particular brand stands for. They want to set themselves apart from the crowd. They want to feel special. They want people to look at them and think they're special, that they are part of this brand. They have an association. They are part of almost like an exclusive group. And what brands very cleverly do is, regardless of the level of luxury, your everyday, your affordable luxury, for example, looking at handbags, you have brands like Kate Spade or Anya Heinmarsh who will create, create products that people want to be a part of. They like the association, whether it's a celebrity who wears the items, what the brand uh, signifies or stands for or is associated with. But what you find is as you go up the levels of luxury, the brands become incredibly sophisticated. And what they do is, for example, from your premium core and above, they will create iconic products. And these iconic products will be sold at very high prices, high prices relative to brands uh, producing similar products. And what they will do is couple the iconic products high prices with really slick very smart marketing campaigns and these marketing campaigns give the impression of exclusivity that you're one of x who has this product and this is where it rings true for brands like hermes for example with the birkin where you're one of a very limited number of people a year who's had privileged access to the hermes birkin and with this marketing, they create the impression of exclusivity. That is what people are buying into, the exclusivity that they're one of a few number of people who has bought into this brand or who have a particular bag. And that's how the brand is able to sell high volumes of these products. And then what happens when you get to the top end of the market? So now I'm talking your super premium, I'm talking your ultra high end. So think of brands such as Hermes, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, because they fit into this category very nicely. And what they do is they fiercely protect the integrity, their brand equity. So what people think, the esteem, the regard, the perception they have for their brand, they guard it closely. They never offer their products on sale, with the exception, of course, of Hermes. You'll say to me, oh, they have the sample sale. But that is not their core their core products or the mainline products people buy Hermes for. It's end of line. It's a number of products that they sell, but they don't affect the integrity of the brand at all. But back to those three brands, what they do is the brands never discount their brands. They're always full price. And by selling them full price, they never let consumers think that they're paying too much for a brand. So if a, a brand went on sale, Louis Vuitton or any one of those went on sale, you would struggle to pay full price because, you know, at some point during the season, the price is going to go down. So you'd never pay full price because you don't think it's worth it. So what the brand does is they maintain the price of the, the products. And then what they do is instead of talking or making a, a big fuss about how expensive their products are, 
they repackage the products and sell them as a complete value added product that brings a lot of good things to the table. So you're buying into the prestige of the brand, you're buying into the heritage, um, the over 100 years that the, the brand has been in existence for. Louis Vuitton has been around since 1854, Hermes 1837 for example, Chanel 1910. So you're buying into the heritage, you're buying into the prestige, the craftsmanship, you're buying into the quality of the fabrics, you're buying into the exclusivity, you're buying into everything, all the good stuff that these brands stand for. It's a value added product that brings a lot of things to the table. And that is what gets consumers excited. If they bought the price down, you wouldn't value them as highly. So what happens is each year as the cost of raw materials or labor or taxes go up and they need to make sure they can recoup their money and, and make more, they then put up the prices. But because you've already associated high value with high price, you are comfortable. You actually expect the brand to put up the price. You are willing to pay extra because you know you're paying um, a high amount of money for a high value product. That is how brands such as Hermes, Chanel, um, Louis Vuitton are able to put up their products on a lot of their, their ranges um, every year because they've created a high value product that people are willing to pay more and more for because they want to be part of this exclusive group that owns these products. Looking at the pandemic last year, I'm gonna attach a video last year, uh, attach a video above where uh, Chanel and Louis Vuitton got into a lot of trouble from the consumers. They felt they were being greedy the way they increased prices twice during the pandemic. I go into detail as to why they did that from a business point of view. But as I mentioned, luxury is about uh, buying an identity. You're buying into a complete product. You're buying into something you aspire into and you now are a part of. And brands, as they go up the food chain, know that even if they push their prices up and they've maintained their brand equity, consumers will pay the price. And that is essentially why luxury products are expensive. If you have any further questions or do you like something in, in more detail, let me know as always in the comments down below. But do share this with anybody with an interest in luxury, just want you to know about prices because I read comments where people seem to think, uh, these brands put up the prices because they want to keep poor people away from the brand. It couldn't be further from the truth. They actually want more people to buy the products and in turn they make more money. But do, do like, do subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again soon.